guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We have had a cold front come in as a of chilly. last night. It is really chilly. I had to wear a coat out here this morning. I don't know. It's just the wind. It's just kind of like a biting wind. It is a biting wind. The sun is out though. The only thing that makes me happy about the cooler weather is that it will preserve our spring bulbs a little bit. Oh, they sure. They will last longer if it doesn't get quite as hot and lilacs are just starting to bloom. In fact, we planned on doing a garden tour, filming a garden tour for you guys this morning. And uh, Aaron, before you even got out of bed, you were like, it's too windy. Yeah. Um, so hopefully tomorrow we'll get that filmed for you. Uh, but it's been a really busy week. I don't think there's anything we need to go over before we jump in. I don't think so. So the first video was planting perennials with my mom. Uh, so I had some Empress Wu hostas, some falling in love sweetly anemones, some desert plains penicetum. What else did I, I think those are the three maybe that I took out there. Um, so I took those to their house and we just had a nice morning placing those and getting them in the ground. Yeah, pretty much it. I showed you a little bit, I guess, around in their garden. And I think we are about this close to being able to do a tour through their renovation. I know that that's a super popular question right now. Aren't they still waiting on their fridge? Well, yeah, they are waiting on their fridge still. I don't, that, think we'll, I don't think we'll have to wait for that to arrive in oh, order okay. to do a tour. We were waiting on the pergola to be finished, which was just finished yesterday. Oh, cool. She said there's a couple little things they needed to do, uh, but we're going to get started here on the landscape like within the next week or two, so that'll be fun. First question from that video was from VDK80. Loved seeing your mom's garden again, so pretty, and the views are fantastic. They are from that hill. I mean, just the view of the valley it, when it's a clear day, so beautiful. Question on where she bought the arbor that surrounds the new fountain, please. She bought that at their garden center. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what brand it is. I honestly, like, standing here right now, don't even remember what it looks like. It's black. Maybe it has, like, like a diamond lattice pattern, maybe. Just come on down to Andrew C. Yeah, Ontario, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do, do they actively sell it? Like, they have multiple ones? or They might. Your mom seems to always get, um, like, the beauty of Andrew's is that she gets in like unique things that are generally not mass produced. Mm -hmm. So like you never really know what you're going to get, which is kind of the fun, you know? Well, and then she'll get like a couple of a yeah. lot of things instead of backstocking like 20 of the same thing. And you ask like, where'd it come from? Oh, there was a guy that came through with a big truck and he just unloaded his stuff and I bought a few things from him. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, some traveling. If guy. you really want to know, you could probably send him an email andrewseed at gmail.com and they may be able to answer that for you. I have no idea. I'm sorry. Uh, next question is from Peggy. Serious question. Is there a front or a back to a plant? I planted four rows of Sharon's and they're all blooming facing the back. There is, is shape wise. There's usually a back of a plant. You know, you want to, if you're positioning something in a flower bed and you want it to look the most beautiful from a certain angle, I always look at a plant, like look it over find the best side if I can and face that in that direction. Uh, but if all the blooms are facing the back, it could just be because that's where most of the sun is. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on that one, because uh, you know your, your space and how they are positioned. But sometimes if they're getting all the light from one side, they might bloom that way. I've not noticed that with Rosa Sharon's though, you know? Mm -hmm. Letha said, what hand soap do you use? Even when I wear gloves under my nails and on my dry skin are near impossible to look clean black nail polish <laughs> yeah. or just something real dark yeah dark brown nail polish something like that my fingernails are not clean right now I don't use any particular soap at all hand soap I guess it's by the kitchen sink it's probably something I bought at the grocery store I think the one I have right now is sort of like a foam and it's kind of coconut yeah scented I'm not super fussy about stuff like that those of you who've seen my hands up close know this <laughs> about me. Garden of Petals said, wow, your mom is keeping up with you after her surgery. She's doing great. Uh, just wondering what type of irrigation does she have where you planted and how often it's watered. Is the irrigation on a timer? It is on a timer. It's got its own zone. It's the brown drip tubing that we use too. Uh, it's got uh, drip holes every 18 inches, right? Or 12. I don't know what they get. They may, be, may use the every 12 or every 18. Um, so that's what it is in that area. And I am not sure how often they water it. I want to say it's twice a week. Yeah, I know that uh, they they definitely do like really long sets uh -huh. less often. Mm -hmm. DZ said, your parents' property is gorgeous. I'm wondering, does the ivy have to be trimmed regularly or does it stay pretty much contained in that area? It does have to be trimmed. It's been there for as long as I can remember. Like, it was there when I was a kid. Like, was it planted there when we moved in? It possibly. 
you know that rock wall like mm-hmm. where did all that rock come from i don't know the, most of the rock walls that you see in their garden were there when we moved in you couldn't see them due to the weeds mm. when we moved in i sure. mean it was waist high weeds i was six at the time so do you think at some that point means something different now but do you think at some point the garden looked like semi nice before the weeds took over or do you think it was because that's a lot of effort for someone to go through and put in the rock wall like right I, it only takes like six months of not caring for something uh-huh. for it to look wild in our area. If there were things there, there was no evidence when we moved in other than weeds. Just like... The things that... Well, and I was six, again, when we moved in. The things I can remember that were there were the locust tree that's now gone. Mm-hmm. Um, the maple tree that's on the south side of the deck. Yeah. Um, the raspberries were there. There's not as many of them now. They've taken out rows. And then, like, the cottonwood trees that are yeah. down in the orchard area, those were there. And the rock walls largely were there, other than the ones around the pool, because the pool area used to be pasture. Mm-hmm. Um, so the rock walls around the base of that were put in when the pool was put in, because they had to level it up, and they'd bring in a tremendous amount of dirt to do that. That's or- so much terracing mm-hmm. to do like so much rock to bring in because i don't think that that rock came from the property no it did not and i do know when we were young we would get a uh, permit and run up into the hills and there were a few locations where we could get similar like you know mm-hmm. skinny rocks, flat rocks like flat rocks um from a different couple different areas and to do some repair work because there were a few spots that would collapse and we'd have to you know not we I'd help gather the rocks, but my dad and my mom and dad would fix the walls. So I don't know if they, you know, whoever put those in before went up and did that, or if they had somebody like bought the rock and brought it in. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I that. always find that interesting when, uh, when, you know, things are in place and you don't really know the history of like, who did this? Because right. someone did a tremendous amount of work, mm-hmm. especially back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you guys only moved in in like the nineties, uh-huh. but still, Back then, that was that was still a lot of work. Oh, Somebody yeah. put ton a ton Tons of effort of into effort. doing that. And the way they did it, I mean, it looks a million times better with all the plants and. Yeah. But it's like little rooms. Yeah. And it was set up and terraced in a way to where it could be. It could, it could be, be, be that way. Yeah. yeah. Like somebody had a. Had somebody some kind of had an eye yeah. and, and some thought to that. Yeah. To put it in. To nothing else on that property, though. It's like the rock wall was the. Like the pinnacle. It was the diamond in the in the yeah, rough, sure. really. Sarah said, have you pruned your gorgeous rose trees yet? I've been waiting to prune mine until I see how you do yours. I've never pruned a rose tree before and I'm nervous. I have not. I was looking at them the other day. I'm like, they look pretty good. Maybe I just don't need to touch them this year. They do look pretty good. They do. I do need to get into the center though because like one of them in particular kind of gathered a bunch of leaves, mm. which I was happy about because it was kind of protecting the graft right there. But I need to get in there and clean those out a little bit. And I might need to go trim off little ends. Do you but... have like a gauntlet glove you can stick in there? Oh, I think I can come in from underneath. Oh, okay. <laughs> do a little, uh, you know, with my <laughs> rose. Well, they're not rose gloves. I don't even know what are those. They're just gloves, I think. Just you just thicker. happen to use them for rose pruning. Yeah, they're awesome. Leanne said, hey, Laura, how's it going? Uh, I just love watching your videos and learn so much from all of them. That makes me happy to hear. I have a bed in my garden zone 6, Ohio, that I have slowly been filling with perennials, but it's been very st- it has a very stubborn thistle problem. I've dubbed the area the thistle forest, and I battle it every year by hand pulling throughout the season. Is there an easier way to get rid of them without killing the other plants? Do you think that they will be choked out once I have enough plants to the bed. I mean, planting thickly does wonders for a lot of those types of weeds. And really, unless you're willing to do some sort of spray, hand pulling when they're young is about the only way that I know how to get rid of them. And we, I would use like a dead weed brew on them mixed at the highest mix concentrate with an emulsifier, like a spreader sticker, spreader sticker uh, mixed in so that the, the spray will really adhere to the leaves. But if you've got a lot of other plants around them, You'd have to be really careful about that. You could put like on the end of a, a pump sprayer, you know, that got, got the wand. Some people will uh, take like a bowl, like a plastic bowl or a cup or something like that, and they'll cut a hole in the bottom and stick the um, sprayer through it. And then that you can put the whole thing over just the weed and spray the weed and so that nothing else like sprays out on any other of the weeds. So, I mean, that's an option if you want to try that. Maureen said, can you grow Empress Wu in a pot, a really big pot? I want them in my garden, but I'm not prepared to leave my plants in the garden when we move. Absolutely. Hostas are great in pots. 
Amanda said, love your channel so much, Laura. Speaking of weeding, can you share all the tips and tricks? You all have huge amounts of land. What should those uh, who struggle with big corner lots do to keep up with, without breaking their bodies, all the, all the while avoiding chemicals? We hand, except for in gravel areas, we hand not pull. We hula ho, hand hula ho the weeds out. And they're just on such a uh, rotation that every area gets hit pretty routinely. And if you get after the weeds early enough in the season, most of the time you kind of get on top of it. Not that you can let go completely because the weeds will still keep coming up with that spring boom. They're nothing like that. And if you can get past that, then I feel like you're better off. And if you can break up your garden in sections, that's what I used to do when I was doing it all by myself. Um, I would have zones in the garden and then I would assign that zone a day so that I knew it was like a manageable size chunk of ground to address. So I'd have five zones. So uh, for the five work days of the week, I'd have one zone that I knew I needed to address for weeds, deadheading, anything like that, any kind of routine maintenance. So it didn't take me very long because I would hit that spot every single week. Why are you smiling? You used to do it on your lunch break. Yeah, I did. <laughs> like you would hit all your zones. I remember like when, when I had lunch breaks, because sometimes we would be home at the same time uh -huh. on lunch break. And uh, like I wanted to chill, you know, like this is my chill time. And you're like, nope, out in the garden, like in my zone. Yeah. Well, you just get it done, right? Yeah. And then that evening I knew I could come home and cook dinner and just relax. And yeah. I didn't have to worry about any of the work part because I was in work mode. And is I also, cooking relaxing for you? Yeah. Is it? If I'm organized, it's mm. relaxing for sure. It's a little less relaxing right now because Samantha wants to be involved in everything, which is so awesome. But you guys know how that is when you're trying to include a three-year-old in your projects. Kind of a double-edged sword. Well, and it involves sharp tools and hot things. It's just like brings no. an extra level of stress. So there's occasionally I'll just say, no, Samantha, I just like, I yeah. need a moment. Can you please go play or read a book or something like that? Um, and, but most of the time I try to involve her, I'll yeah. set her up with a cutting board and then I'll just get some random thing out of the fridge, like celery. I'm like, here, I need this, cut this up. Yeah. I don't really need it, but she has a good time being involved. Yeah. Emma said, I love the playing card, uh, sweet. Oh, steps, suit. I don't know why I read that word sweet playing card suit steps. Are those handmade? It looks very Alice in Wonderland. Yes, those were handmade. My mom got a hold of some molds. They were like the spade, the club, the diamond, and the heart, I have to remember. And um, we mixed up concrete and made a whole bunch of those stepping stones. And there are a, there's a stack of them somewhere because they took up most of that pathway down into the orchard um, with steps and things like that. Um, so there's just a small patch of them still left down there, but we did our handprints and we did all kinds of like drawings on them and it led down to where their patio area is now down there. That was a bunny hutch and like I had ducks down in there when I was growing up. It was a very kind of magical, whimsical feel. Next video was laying out the Dreamstream Pond Extension with Brian from Aquascape. That was a really fun day. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about the Dreamstream expansion since the moment the pond was finished. Like the whole group, all of us were it just It wasn't sitting. even finished. It wasn't finished? No, we were like, well, they kind of oh, knew. I, that's true. They rolled they up planned. the, yeah. Yeah, they were like, you know what we could do? And they, they didn't have the time or right. you know resources to do it at the moment. They were planning on it as they were yeah. kind of finishing up the build because the liner, they left a bunch of extra liner on the side where they intended on possibly doing the, an expansion. I remember feeling kind of overwhelmed at that moment because, I mean, we were just sitting down with our legs dangling in the water and they were just talking through all of these possibilities. And my mind was already just like reeling from what I just watched happen. Yeah. <laughs> like in three days, this flat piece of ground was transformed into this beautiful pond area. And I was surprised too, because I was not expecting to love it as much as I do. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a, it was a, a moment for me, like a growing moment for me. Like you need to trust the process, trust the professionals. Anyway, so we've been talking about it, but I didn't know what kind of ideas Brian had in his brain. And he gets here, stands there for just a few minutes and then just starts painting. Like we could do this and this and this, and this is the way we need to take it. And to make it look natural, which is my biggest thing. And right now, it doesn't look as natural as it will once plants grow. And you know, we, once sure. we have plants growing over rocks and things like that, and it's more mature and filled in, it kind of looks like, oh, look at all this, you know, the rock right here. Um, anyway, he just has these great ideas on how to make it look like the water just cut out this part. 
you know, like this is where the water naturally flew. As he was describing it, you know, I, I could visualize it and I think you were able to visualize it, but I wonder if people watching weren't able to visualize it as much because they didn't just go through the pond project like we did. Yeah. You know, we just watched them create berms and move rocks around and create holes and divots and, mm -hmm. you know, shelves and mm -hmm. shelves uh, and th all those kinds of things. And so I wonder if... Um, as he's describing it, if some people were just kind of like, uh, I did see one or two comments like, I can't visualize it, but it's going to be awesome, yeah. you know? And those types of things, like, I know you're always trying to encourage me to whenever we're painting lines in the grass or just chatting through a problem, or not a problem, but chatting through design ideas and all that sort of thing. You're always like, let's get a camera out, you know, let's explain what we're going to do here. And I'm always like, ah, it's really hard to explain, especially yeah. when you can barely see the paint lines on the ground right. and there's no changes actually being made to the landscape yeah. at that point. So oftentimes we don't film those sorts of things because I, I can't I have a hard time describing doing what it's going to be like. Yeah. Especially when I don't have anything to show for it at the end of the video. I'm like, yeah. well, here's the paint lines you can barely see, right. you know, but Brian really has a, a good way of making ideas come to life for me. I think there was only one thing I said. And all, all I said was, I would love to have line of sight from the doors of the Hartley. I would like another opening with something that draws you in. Mm -hmm. That's it. Go to go to town. You know, like just go, go for it. So, and he he really did, and I'm excited. And we also got to meet Colleen, who's the uh, CEO of Aquascape, right? President. 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 Yeah, and maybe CEO. President and CEO. I don't know. Anyway, she's awesome. Really enjoyed the whole day. And Chris Schreiner was there from uh, Green Source Landscaping, who is our like go-to local source for Aquascape. He's an Aquascape contractor. Um, so it was just a really fun day. And then we got to hang out and have dinner and all that sort of stuff. So we're looking forward to that project in October is when I think it's going to go down. And the whole group that was here last time, I I don't know if the whole group is going to be here, but a large part of it. Sounded like they were going to invite all the same all people the same back, people. whether they can make it or not. We'll see, but yeah, I'm looking big time forward to that project. Uh, anyway, Kayla said, love seeing the new ideas for the pond about how many new koi will show up after the eggs hatch. How many fish can your pond size hold? A lot, I think, but I don't know how many will actually make it past egg right. stage. They say that, well, they'll eat their own eggs and it's the ones that get like, like kind of lodged in a plant or like tucked away. Those are the ones that make it past egg stage. I got the sense that, uh, it will sort of manage itself, you mm. know, like they eat the eggs. And so if, um, if you have a lot of koi, like they'll, all the koi will probably eat basically all the eggs mm. and you'll have times where when you have enough koi, there just won't be any, you won't see any new ones. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Wouldn't it, that be fun though for the kids? Yeah. I, I hope so. And those, that pair of ducks that I, uh, I did a reel, I think on Instagram and Facebook where there was a pair of ducks. They were back in the pond yesterday. Yeah. Paul and I were standing there. We were discussing some drip things and they just flew in and oh. just started swimming and like bathing in the pond. And we were like, Oh, I didn't have my phone with me though. I was going to take a picture. You had my phone with you. Like Why it was off my... on a, I think I left it in oh. your gator. <laughs> And it was off somewhere else. Down Sprig Lane said, question, what does Aaron think of the extension of the pond? Is he as excited as you and the kids? Yeah, not more excited, but like at least the same. It just adds so much movement and so much life. And there's so much, uh, so many more insects and birds and things like that around yeah. the space. And I love it. You know, I, um, I'm really happy. I'm excited about the extension of the pond. I'm mostly happy about just buttoning up areas. Yeah. Like if there's dirt, you know, around, it's like, let's just throw something. To me, it's like, let's just throw some trees if nothing else, you know, <laughs> like yeah. get the trees growing. Mm -hmm. But I'm super excited about the pond. Yeah. Or stream, I guess. Are you more excited about the stream or your bobcat? Oh man, the bobcat is kind of awesome. Mm. It When you get the machine that does what you need. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I feel like I should tell a quick little story about the whole Bobcat yeah. John Deere situation. So in a recap a couple of year, uh, weeks ago, yeah. I had mentioned that John Deere kind of dropped the ball because I tried to get a John Deere wheel loader just like the Bobcat because they sell one. And I just didn't, I didn't get a good response from the guy I was working with. Well... And this was from Coastline in Meridian, mm -hmm. not our local John Deere, not mm -hmm. the uh, Ontario branch that I normally deal with because they told me they couldn't sell me one. So anyway, I got a call randomly from a number and then he left a message. I didn't answer it. 
He left a message and said, hey, this is the uh, manager here at the store, and on the John Deere store here in Ontario. And um, just, you know, wanted to chat with you if you can give me a call back. So I called him back and he told me that his, I think it's his grandparents maybe, that live in a town a couple hours away and they're like, you know, followers. They watch the channel and they were like, you need to call that guy and you need to make this right. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I told him, I was like, well, look, it wasn't your branch. Like you guys were fine. Um, it was just, it was totally different. Yeah. So he was like, okay, well, that's good. He's like, well, we just wanted to make sure that, you know, if, it sounds like you're taken care of and you're good and you're happy with what mm -hmm. you, you got. But, you know, we try to like, if we hear of something like that, we want to try to make it right if we can. That's and, amazing customer service. Even though yeah. you weren't dealing with him, like, you know, trying to get the prices and all of that, it was a different branch. It's so yeah. awesome that it makes you want to go... Yeah. Well, I told him, I was like, look, it wasn't you guys. Um, mm -hmm. I like John Deere. I'll be back, mm -hmm. you know, next time I need a, you know, something John Deere, like I'll probably try you guys first cause you're local and mm -hmm. I don't have any issue with you. So right. it's, I'm, you know, there's no like animosity or right. anything, <laughs> but I thought that was funny. Sherry said, Laura says she's loving boulders and berms. Priceless. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I never thought. I want to Ever. put some rocks out in the South Garden. You're kind of like, nah. well, not if there's not berms. Really? If you're just like plunking a rock down in the middle of a flat garden. I think it looks good. I like it because it looks like tucked in and like the rocks are buried part way into a berm. But they it sort looks of very get natural. hidden by plants. You know, you plant around them and they're just, they're there, but they're not like beacons. I think they would be more so out there. Not if you plant around them. Do the rocks and the planting at the same time. Karen said, why October? I think that's just when everybody... We asked them. We were like, can you do it next month? Yeah. And they were they actually were like, well, actually, that would help us out logistically. And I was like... Uh, we're good. But I think it also would be a nightmare logistically because uh, all the people that like fly in, mm -hmm. they... It's know, go it's go time for, you know, this for industry. For all those people. Yeah, in like May and stuff. So October is a great time because it's slowing down for everyone, including us. Mm -hmm. There's not as much going on. And yeah, I think it'll be good. And it'll be so much cooler. You guys, last year, I felt so bad for everyone. It was like, uh, it was the only week of the year where it was over 100. I don't think a lot of them really minded because they're used to humidity in the summer. And so I think they were kind of like, oh, it's a different kind of heat. Nice. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. We did get a nice windstorm. Remember that? During during yeah. one of the parts of it. Oh, and there was a bunch also, of that loose dirt. our heat, I mean, if you can escape the sun, which I guess they weren't really able to because they're yeah. out. But like if you can find some shade, you know, as a reprieve, like mm -hmm. it's not. It's bearable. It's pretty bearable. Yeah. Chris, our fan, said this is so very interesting or exciting. So when will you have to start moving plants and trees in preparation for October? You know, I could probably move the crab apple. There's not that much that we're going to need to move. Um, the There's crab, two trees? The crab apple and what was the other the one? The evergreen? Oh, yeah. He said the evergreen wasn't in the wrong spot. It was just the wrong uh, height. Like, height. Yeah, he said we can use both of these trees in the... You just got to like plunk them up, put yeah. some dirt in, create a berm, and then like put them back down. Right. So I don't I don't know. I could move the crab apple though you anytime. Know, bobcat sells... I know. I know. You don't even have to tell me. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice to be able to move our own stuff? They have it tree probably... spades. It like, wouldn't make sense, probably, because no. I'll bet it's really expensive. Oh, yeah. Like, if sure. you had a tree yard, it would make sense to buy something like that. But for us, if we move, you know, two or three things a year, it'd be cheaper just to have Nathan. Because he can come out just with his truck. Yeah. The small truck. Right. It's like a regular size mm -hmm. truck. And it's got the spade on the back. Right. Probably a lot cheaper just to have him come yeah. move stuff. Brian and Tammy Olson said, what an oasis you will have in the shallow areas of the new pond. Will the fish be okay in the winter? Do you think that area will be freezing or frozen? Can't wait for this project. I think most of the fish will end up in the larger area. I think they kind of know and they'll go deep enough. Like this last winter, it never froze over completely. We did, when we had that cold spell where it got negative six, we did put a, like a stock, stock tank heater. Mm -hmm. We just sunk that in just to make sure that if it was going to freeze over, that there would be at least one spot thawed out so that ox oxygen could still exchange. Um, but it never, it never did. And I think there's going to be enough movement in the water to where unless it stays, like sustains a really low temperature for a long time, I don't think we'll have it freeze over. But it, it completely depends on the weather. Um, and I think the fish will all end up where they need to be during that. But Prey on Crute said, what will the area measure once the pond and stream are finished? A full acre? No. 
I'm trying to get an idea how much land I would need to attempt a project like this. The pond itself is about 50-ish wide, like from tip to tip, like wetlands to the, the pump area, and like 20, was it like 26 or 28 yeah. deep? You could do that. You know, I'm trying to think. My parents live on a third of an acre. Uh-huh. You could fit something like that in their backyard. Oh, yeah. So if you had a third of an acre, like including your house and a front yard and everything, uh-huh. you could fit that pond in there. Oh, yeah. For sure. CV? 7357 said, uh, Hi, Laura. So exciting. Was wondering if you are planning to incorporate the original small waterfall that you disassembled a while back into the, into this design. Not into this one in particular, but into another area in our south garden uh, that I kind of know where I want it, but we need to get a structure out there first, and I haven't found the right structure yet. Or we could put that at my parents. Oh, yeah. They would love it. If, do they? Is that something they would want? I think so. Your dad doesn't want a pond. Well, I think your mom would want. I think the pond, pond lists is right, what they would want. That's what I mean, want. though. Your dad doesn't want like stand like water. Right. He wants a disappearing. Yeah, which is what, what? this is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Next video was refreshing past garden projects. I just had a list of things I needed to tackle, starting with the leaning topiary that was all fluffy and woolly, and it was in a spot that was getting a, it, it is getting a lot of sun right now because the birch tree above it isn't fully leafed out. But once it is leafed out, that spot has become too shaded. It wasn't when we very first put the topiary there because the birch tree was a much smaller tree at that point. But we did get it uh, trimmed up and replanted out in the south garden. It looks so pretty where it ended up. I do need to go check on it though because it was so windy last night. Like I don't. Do you know what the wind gusts were last night? It was moving furniture around on our balcony. Yeah, it was. Quite it was a bit. Yeah, it was a lot. So I'm thinking it's probably leaning this morning. I need to go check on it, but I love that. And then we took the pot that the topiary was in and we put a final fire maple that has been sitting on our back patio in the same wood box for the last two years. We potted that into it, which has a lot more room now for root growth. And then what do we do? Oh, the Semper Vibum bowl. We got that all refreshed and cleaned up and repotted. Aaron's Garden Geek said, I think I heard you mention because one of the succulents was blooming, it meant the mother plant would eventually die but baby plants had emerged. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. I had never heard this before. Great information. Does this happen with most or all succulents? I am not sure if it happens with most or all succulents. This my experience with Semper Vivums. Once that mother plant blooms, uh, usually at that point, it's got like a ring of babies around it, and that one just kind of fizzles out and goes away, and the babies kind of take over. Um, so I got that part taken out and got the babies taken off and replanted. User ZK2MG said, I love anything you do. Thank you. I also love watching your helpful videos too. My question is, why don't you post your videos on Facebook? Just curious. The short answer is that Facebook is the worst. Uh, The (laughs) long answer is that when we do post, it's just kind of like Facebook's a hassle. Yeah. Um, We get copyright notices every video, Mm -hmm. even though we pay for a license to use the music. Mm -hmm. um, It takes, it would take time to edit out the music, Mm -hmm. but I have to go in and manually like um, fight every single claim every single day. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times, and it's these like faceless companies that I don't even know the names of that Mm -hmm. have claimed and said, this is our music. And I'm like, no, I I paid, I paid money Mm -hmm. for a license for this. But, like, I'm not going to hire a lawyer to go sue them, yeah. you know, because I rightfully can use it. And then the second thing is that Facebook just doesn't serve our videos to our audience. They like, don't like the structure of our content. It's not like what they're after. Yeah, it's really funny, though. They're pushing vertical content pretty hard. They're pushing short form content, like short Which we used to do. We used to do short videos and get millions and millions of views on those. Yeah. But we don't do those anymore. No, we kind of have gone to like more of a vloggish format. Longer format. Just showing what we're doing. and I like filming those so much better. Well, I mean, both are kind of fun in their own way. But yeah, so, um, you know, I see it just endlessly whenever we ha- whenever we post something that like Facebook wants us to post I see so many people who are like oh wow glad to see you're making videos again and yeah. I'm like oh geez like yeah. we make six seven videos a week but these people that followed and maybe would want to know they just don't if you didn't hit subscribe on YouTube you know and mm-hmm. you were watching on Facebook it just will stop showing up in your feed and you'll never know why mm-hmm. you'll just think that Laura quit making videos right I feel that way about Facebook and Instagram both like I'm not super interested in catering 
our content to the to what they to want. To what Facebook yeah. wants. Or yeah. Like catering your content to what the audience wants is is fine because mm-hmm. you know you kind of like pick up on what people are saying and mm-hmm. you know if they're like I don't like this kind of music or whatever you start to pick up on little things you're like okay well, that's not a big deal we can mm-hmm. you know yeah try to make it uh, for you know what people want mm-hmm. but yeah I really hate catering to social media companies I know. I know I feel like YouTube is just so steady and I feel like the audience audience that you get on YouTube is the most true. Yeah. I guess. Like you're, like you're, you're watching this here because you want to watch it here. Yeah. And that's the kind of people that I want to have sure. in our like community, you know, yeah. are people that want, who want to be there. And there are so many, you know, numbers and things on the other platforms that just like, it's not an actual viewer, you know, it it's, feels like number chasing. Like yeah. I, the content that we make is, I don't feel like we're chasing after like big numbers. We're no. just showing what we're doing and yeah. kind of living our life. Yeah. But it's when, peaceful. <laughs> Yeah, when you make videos that, like what Facebook wants, it does kind of start to feel like, okay, you're curating things mm-hmm. to where you're trying to get big numbers. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. That, that has a place and it's fine. And I'm not judging anybody who's no. doing it. Like, you know, Mr. Beast is probably one of the people that like figured it out. Yeah. And he's like, this is what the algorithm wants. Uh-huh. And this is what the demographic wants. And mm-hmm. good for him. That's yeah. great. More power to you. Yeah. Everybody wants to make different stuff. That's cool. Yeah, for sure. Mary Murphy said, did I miss all the tulips that were planted in the orchard? Um, the bulb, I don't think we planted any tulips in the orchard. We've got uh, fritillaria, muscari, which are blooming right now. Some daffodils are still blooming in there. We had crocus and uh, uh, winter aconite blooming early on. So those are already done and gone. But it's looking really pretty and like perfect. It's exactly what I wanted in that space. Like, it looks like you can still walk through it. Yeah. Like, it's not uncomfortably tall. The grass isn't. And you can see the, all the colorful bulbs, but they're sparse enough to where it doesn't look, like, too much. Sure. If that makes sense. So, I'm really enjoying it. And we will show you when we come to a tour. It does not look the same on camera as it feels in person, though. And I hate that about that space. Ugh. I it- wish that the grass is a little greener. And maybe over some time like some of that dead looking grass will kind of like work its way out i don't know if i need to mow it shorter at the end of the season Mm -hmm. or like start getting it short by the end of the season to make sure that there's a lot of room for the bulbs sure well there's plenty of room yeah all i mean you can definitely distinguish the grass line from the bulb line but it's not as green as the rest of our grass no it's not so i need to work on that i don't know if i don't know if that's like um a fescue thing I don't know. know. I'll try to make it better. (laughs) I think it looks great. Jake said, that was a good size maple you put in the new container. Is it okay to plant a young maple in a large container to start? Yes. Or should I upsize the planter every few years as the maple grows? You can start it in a large container when it's young or you can upsize. I mean, either way is fine. Um, the, I think there was a comment. I don't know if it made it in here. Someone's like, I don't understand why you gave the topiary a nice spot out in the garden and then didn't give a nice spot out in the garden to that maple. I don't understand that. Well, it's because I want the tree on the patio. I want also, that. Also, we have the sun. Yeah, I want the height and I want that structure on the patio. And they do just fine in containers. I mean, that one lived in that tiny wood box for two full years and is still completely fully leafing out. Um, so it's but totally. The, the tree would die if you put that tree out in the South Garden. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, would, it, would, it would fry it, fry like in a second, unless I had more maturity on some of our other trees. And I could treat it as an understory sort of like protected tree and plant it on the shaded side of something else, then we might be able to get away with it. But in this case, it's not an appropriate tree to plant out in the landscape. So there. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if that comments in here or not, but next question is from cat caretaker. Wow. That looks so much better. I like it in that location. It looks like a little whimsical. It does. Uh, and I like a little whimsy. I'm wondering when they are going to have the drone release all those uh, be- beneficial bugs. Would this be the ideal time to get ahead to start on any of those pests? Not really. It's not quite warm enough. Uh, we haven't noticed anything. And I've been looking over my bulbs. All the spring bulbs that we have been um, cutting and harvesting out of that space are clean. I don't know if the type of bugs like those kind of plants or not, but they are clean plants. And I'm just so thankful for that. Um, we have been talking with the company. In fact, they've got some new stuff they're excited for us to try, but we're going to do the same mite release that we did last year, plus some like slow, slow release packets, and we may even do some soil addressing. Um, so 
I'm excited about it. And we will bring you along for that as well. But we have to wait for it to warm up a bit. Shirley said, I have a question about hardening off seedlings. My plants are large enough to be put into the ground. I know I need to set them out for a few hours or days. Can you tell me how much I need to set them out and how many days or weeks? We are in the 70s and the day, uh, days and 50s at night. Oh, it won't take you very long at all to harden those off. Um, usually what I do is I'll set them outside in a protected spot. Even if they're a full sun, I make sure that they are protected from the afternoon sun because they're not used to that yet. So I put them in a kind of protected spot for a few hours the first day, and then the next they go in at night, and the next day I move them a little bit more out into the sun, and then move them back in for the night. And then that third day, I'll usually move them out into uh, quite a lot of sun, and then that night I will maybe put some frost cloth over the top of them, or not, depends on the plant. And then after that, I can put them outside. But it will depend, you know, on the exact type of plant you have, um, that sort of thing. But it's usually like a two or three day process, typically for me. And we have one night that's supposed to be 33. 31. Oh, 31. Is that tonight? Uh, yes. Yeah. I can tell. It's so chilly outside. Yeah, still 31 and then 33. Okay. Yeah. So we're not quite there yet. We're going to have another freeze. Dang it. I am so happy that I have covers over some of my stuff out there. The next video is planting onions and a load of big trees. So we got our flat of onions out, separated all of them. I still haven't counted how many are out there, but we ended up with a ton of onion plants, way more than I had anticipated. And I cannot bear to, well, I can, usually I can find homes for my extra plants, but I ended up with the few I had left over at the very end of planting them out in the cut flower garden. I planted them in our raised bed in between my rows of cilantro, figuring that the cilantro, once it gets too hot, it'll start to bolt and the onions can kind of take over um, that area at that point. We'll see how that, how that goes. But while we were out planting onions, the load from Jaker Nursery showed up. Erin and I actually went out that morning. We went, drove over there, we walked to the yard, we picked out some things, and then uh, we asked if they could deliver and they said, sure, you want them today? We're like, oh, yeah. Kind of lucky. <laughs> yeah, sure. So while we were out there planting onions, Paul and uh, Bethany and you, you mm -hmm. all three of you were out there helping unload the trees, getting them tied to the uh, T-post. Paul and Bethany had prepared that. They put a couple of T-posts in the ground, and then we have some, like, galvanized pipes <laughs> we tie to the T-post. Anyway, and the trees get tied to those um, just to keep them upright should we have windy days like this. Uh, in case we don't have a chance to get them planted right away. And then we use some of the wood chips that were in that great big pile from Natural Tree. They drop off loads of wood chips here and there. Uh, anyway, so those held in all the root balls so that it keeps them moist. Nancy said, question about the thorns with the honey locust trees around the kids' play area. We had a thorn grow through a tractor tire. Our locusts are thornless. Yeah. I guess I should double check. They're thornless. I just double check. Yeah. yeah, so Shade Masters and Imperials are the only locusts that we have planted. And both are thornless. Well, we haven't planted any Imperials yet. They're still sitting there. Well, and we have the Sunburst. Do we have Sunburst? Right? Those are also thornless. Sunburst, Shade Master, and Imperial yeah. will be the only three varieties we have here. Monica said, do you need to wait until after your first frost date to plant onions? No, onions are a cold crop. You can plant them out fairly early. I want to go look at mine though today because they're pretty wimpy, some oh. of them. I might roll out a piece of cloth over the top of them just for tonight since it's going to be 31. Sure. They've been out there though for a few days now. You can throw up one of those low cats real quick. Yeah, that's true. Could do that. But there's two rows of them hmm. and they're pretty like wimpy and floppy at the moment. So I could just put the fabric right over the top of them and just yeah. put some bricks on it and then tomorrow take it off. Sure. Yeah, I might do that. Ross said, did you crash YouTube? I tried liking this video and got a message that said this resource has exceeded its limit. <laughs> I wish we crashed YouTube, yeah, but no. Nice? <laughs> I don't know why you got that message. That's weird. Peter said, by the time you planted all those onions, even my back was aching for you. Do you have an exercise routine to keep your body flexible and strong enough to do the daily contortions that the garden demands? No, I probably should. You did do like a stretching routine for a while though. Yeah, I should probably do that more. It's just, it's tough to keep on anything. I know. There's just so much to do. Thank goodness we have active jobs though, right? Yeah. Because it's, I mean, it's every single day, even on weekends. Like you don't get a day away from the, that type of activity. Yeah. Really. Tanya said, would an imperial honey locust tree live in in 9B zone? Is the honey locust the tree you said low, low maintenance tree? Yes, it's a low maintenance tree. Let me see what zone four to eight. So it would not like a zone nine. And Naylin said, that's a lot of onions. I didn't get my onions started this year. Can I just plant the seeds in the garden? Uh, you'll probably want to go find yourself some sets, which are like little bulbs or little plant 
plant seedlings to transplant out into your garden. I've never direct seeded onions, not to say that you couldn't, but I just haven't done that. Kelly said, are you going to be trying the new firefly petunia that glows in the dark? No. You're not? No. Well, so they asked us, the, the grower that grows our stuff, all of our like proven winter stuff. Mm -hmm. and They're kind of ugly. They're not a pretty petunia to me. I think it's just like that it's interesting. The fact that it, it glows in the dark. They crossed it with like a worm or a fish or I just frog. feel like it's a slippery slope and it's messing with natural order and it kind of makes me uncomfortable. I don't like that. Well, you know, we all watch Jurassic Park and we know how it ends. <laughs> I would you. love to know your opinion. Um, on this. So if you guys want to chime in and let me know what you think about the firefly petunia. Your mom's like super against it. Well, yeah, she is. I mean, they've always, that's been always been their stance. And... Yeah. And now all the signs at the garden centers that say no GMO seeds actually make sense yeah. because there is a GMO tomato available now. Uh, but I, I, you're would... not consuming this petunia. I mean, it's like a, a, yeah. just a, a plant that you right. look at. Yeah. Um... It's still, I feel like it, I don't know. I don't know enough makes about you feel it. Weird. Yeah, it just makes me feel like it's messing with. I don't know enough about it either. So yeah, if people want to educate us on what it is, it doesn't bother me personally. But again, I'm not educated, me. so. so that's <laughs> it's funny, isn't that interesting? How like you and I are both uneducated about the same topic, but like you're bothered by it and I'm not. Yeah. Like, what does that say about us? No, you I know? don't know. You just gotta trust your gut sometimes on things. If you, especially if you don't know about enough about it. Like for me, I don't want to tread into that territory until yeah. I am educated. But you're like, I'll jump right in. I'll grow it. Because that's what you said. Like, I'll grow it somewhere. No, you will not. Because <laughs> I will not. I don't want to. I don't know. I don't want that on the property. Yeah. I don't know until I know more about it. SJ Lamb said, have you ever considered growing a living willow structure? It could be a fun project and bet the kids would enjoy it. I love the way those look, but what a nightmare. To keep yeah. those pruned and trimmed. And I mean, I might be saying the same exact thing about the great trees that I'm yeah. growing in pots it might be a project that is really hard to keep under control it would be cool to have like it a willow would. bench or something I saw, like that what is the name of the place I saw it on Instagram they have an apple globe a treat so it's a trunk and then they have all of these branches coming out of like one part of the trunk and they've trained it into a, a globe it's uh -huh. a round shaped hollow in the center an apple tree Wow. Oh, that would be so cool. You know, that would be kind of fun. We, mm -hmm. I should, I'm going to look into that. Yeah, I'll try to find it on, in my feed. It was a couple of days ago. I want to say the account starts with like a H, Holvis, Holvis Gruden something. <laughs> <laughs> that might get you close. <laughs> okay. okay. Emily said, can we meet Paul and Bethany or did I miss that one? I asked them. I tried to be very respectful of people's like limit when it comes to having a camera in front of them. And Paul and Bethany are awesome about putting a camera out. In fact, um, I asked Paul to dig out the hollyhocks in front of the house. We just planted a Japanese maple up there, which I think you'll see that before this video comes out. And Bethany took all the, the hollyhocks home and planted them in her own garden. Um, but Paul asked me, do you want me to film it when those come out? I was like, sure, that'd be great. Like he thinks of, mm -hmm. or if he's about ready to do something that I don't even know he's gonna be working on, he'll say like, hey, I'm gonna be working on this, this, and this. Do you want any of it filmed? So it's awesome that they think about yeah. that and he's comfortable with that level. I think Bethany would do a Q&A, but I don't know if Paul's quite there yet. So I will let them decide when they want to, when and if they want to. It doesn't bother me if they don't ever want to. Okay, Cynthia said, love starting my day watching with my cup of tea. You make me uh, want a big garden. Love all the information you share. Question, why are the trees covered over with what looks like wood chips? Are you planting them soon? So the wood chips just serve as a barrier from the wind and the sun. It just keeps them shaded and cool and moist. Um, and we will use all those wood chips in the lane that we're creating around the dirt lands. It's kind of like faux bearing them just a little bit. Yeah, it's just trying to keep them away from exposure. In case and, you have one of those cold nights. Yeah. Just a little insulation. Yeah. Okay, next video is planting big trees with big equipment. So some of the big trees that came in that load, uh, we placed them and Paul and Aaron planted them. It was so awesome. So awesome that we didn't have to manhandle those big root balls. That and, you know, when we would plant them with the forks, the forks were underneath the cage and we had such a hard time getting the cage, that mm -hmm. wire cage off. And you have to kind of like bend the tree back and forth mm -hmm. and you're kind of like rocking the root system inside. And then the, sometimes the root ball would mm -hmm. fall apart. And I've heard people talk about it. Like once you break the root ball, a lot of people are like, yeah. it might go, it might die. Yeah. You know, Which you really want to keep that intact. Yeah. And we don't like to keep the cages on the trees because as you know, the huge blue spruce tree that was, I don't even know how many decades old, 
fell over in a windstorm up by our Persephone garden and the cage was still there. The mm -hmm. cage and a bunch of baling twine. Um, like baling twine, that was a miss. That should be gone. But I know a lot of people plant trees that are in B&B &B in those wire cages and the cages just rust out and eventually go away. They don't do that here. I just found one when I was digging the hole for that Japanese maple up by the house. There was like, there was a little bit of baling twine I could see and then I kept digging and there was that little hook you know how they have sure. like the hooks on it yeah it was part of one of those cages still underneath the soil and there's no plant that exists there sure it died it died yeah so we try to remove as much of the cages as possible and now we can without wrecking the trees yeah plus you know not that physical toll like i don't know that i could manhandle those trees anymore there was a time when i would try and maybe get it done but it's not good for you. We left the burlap on all of them. That's fine. Burlap goes away. We just uh, like untied it from around the deal and kind of splayed it out. Yeah. But it's but um, also like there were roots that were already growing through the burlap mm -hmm. in, in a lot of those trees. So yeah. you kind of already know it's like the roots are going to just right. do their thing. Yeah. And that border is already coming along beautifully. I'm yeah. so excited about it. I love jumping spiders. They're adorable. Aaron was definitely in his element. How long can you leave the trees packed with mulch like that? Probably until next year, if you wanted. Yeah, maybe if you keep mm -hmm. them watered. Keep them watered. Mm -hmm. yeah. Renee said, hey, in the pasture horse barn area, do you need to have some trailer parking for horse friends or campers like Greg the Pond Guys? Greg the Pond Guys trailer? Camper. Camper. Oh, camper. <laughs> Just a thought. There'll be space. Yeah. Back be, there. Yeah, I think there should be in enough the end. space. Mm -hmm. Gloria Hansen said, so fun to see all that wonderful greenery growing in. Question, when you put fertilizer into the bottom of the hole, when planting, doesn't it just leach down away from the roots or does it uh, not do that before the roots reach out to it? Would it benefit the plant to have fertilizer around the root ball instead? It doesn't go away that quickly. It doesn't leach out. It probably would technically make sense to put the biotone like in the dirt around like the mix hole. it into the dirt and then backfill yeah. mm -hmm. that probably be but i don't know when you're just doing a lot you're kind of just going quick and but if you're trying to do it maybe correct it it might be better yeah i can't imagine taking the time to do everything like the proper, the proper way. way yeah i don't think i would like gardening yeah if i felt bound to do that uh Lori hughes said i really like the white fence is it vinyl yes we want a fence like that around our property kind of gives it an estate feel beautiful day out there it really was a beautiful day yeah. and i like the white fence i know that if i had I like my, it too if i had my choice it would be a wood fence that was stained black mm -hmm. my parents have one there is a, a horse like breeding facility yeah, Parma, I think they they like thoroughbreds, yeah. Twenty miles away. Um, yeah, and they've got beautiful. It's like three or four rail black fencing. That's where my parents got the idea to do that around their property, and I would love that. I think it's so pretty, but the maintenance one having to restain it all the time would be a nightmare, and then also the cost. Yeah. So much more, and we already had white vinyl everywhere. Yeah. So it's just a continuation of what we already have, and I actually love it. When it's we bright. bought the South Garden, I got a bid for black. Uh, non-stained, we would have to stain it ourselves. Non-stained to do just the South Garden area was like $30,000, the bid that I got. And I was like, ah, I don't think so. we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Vinyl lasts kind of forever. There's mm -hmm. no maintenance. Mm -hmm. And it was like a fraction of the price. Right. Ontario said, wait, what? Less front lawn? Inquiring minds need to know. We are going to take some sod out. When? Toward the house, front of the house. Uh, in soon, a couple years? Soonish. When, when you feel like it? No, that is my goal this year is to figure that space out because I cannot look another year at that skinny little flower bed along that brick sidewalk. I don't, I don't know. The brick sidewalk, I think that's my, my, uh, hold my hang up. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't love it. I don't love where it ends up. And we, the reason why we did it is that one, the lawn is massive. So we needed to create something that was big enough mm -hmm. scale wise to make sense. And then also the house looks big from that side too. So you need to make sure that everything fits the scale. Um, so we did this like massively wide walkway and it, of course has nothing around it right now. So that's why it looks so perched and so wide, but it also leads out to the parking area, like employee parking sort mm -hmm. of area, but nobody parks there except for, you know, people that are working here during the day. Um, so nobody uses the walkway as like a walkway to our front door. Occasional delivery people will. DoorDash. Yeah, DoorDash does. Um, but it doesn't line up with the grass pathway in the South Garden. When you look at it from like windows upstairs, I don't know why I didn't really think of it. 
I did think of it. I think mm-hmm. it was going to come out too sharp. Like yeah, the, the it, curve, I don't think it, you could match it. It wouldn't look good. The brick walkway itself wouldn't look good, but I want, I always want like pathways to look like a continuous flow to a new area. And this one kind of does this. It's like a yeah. miss, a little bit of a miss, but I think we can rectify it if we do the flower bed lines in such a way to where it kind of meets up with the lines of the flower beds out there. Didn't you talk about it in a video? Like the part, the grass you were going to take out or I I thought you showed it. I, I um, mentioned it in the Japanese maple video this last week. I kind of showed what we were thinking. That hasn't gone out yet, has it? No, but it will by the time this one does. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. The plan is to take out a bunch of sod toward the, the house side of that lawn. Hannah said, would you consider signing up for one of those free wood mulch drop-offs for the lane? It's kind of what we're yeah. signed up on. I know there's like informally. websites you can go to to sign up for free mulch drops, but... We just call Natural Tree and say, yeah. like, just dump if you need to over yeah. here. We could use them. And they do. Welsh uh, boy Ted said, curious, why not put water in the hole when plant is in the hole, then cover with soil, then water again after you cover with soil? We did. Did you? It just, yeah, it didn't show it. Uh, sometimes what would happen is like the camera would get moved before we showed it. Um, the other thing about that though is that it can get really muddy. And you can't pack it in properly. I yeah. just, I don't like doing <clears throat> that. I I do it sometimes if I feel like the root ball is extra dry or something, yeah. or if it's like a transplant situation, I'll do that. Um, like you're digging something up and moving it somewhere else, not already prepackaged in a nice, you know, yeah cage or pot or whatever the but, root balls were wet mm-hmm. um you know because we got up close with them they were plenty moist we put them in the hole I, we did put water in some of the holes but also we put the drip tubing like immediately around the trees and we kind of like mulched them up a little bit as well mm-hmm. and so if you've got drip you know it's just like that slow water i think it's fine i yeah. don't think we don't struggle with things you know not most things we don't do that with and i just i hate packing in root balls like that because then you always it's inevitable you have to go back and yeah. finish it later right because the water needs to you know go away so that you can properly pack the soil in and i don't want it to be a two-day job right. i wanted to get it done put the drip on and then just be done and get to walk away to the next project cammy said how much do they grow in your, in a year on average you could add that info also well sometimes i do i like that on the isley tags anything from isley nursery says the average amount of inches that plant grows in a year. I love that information. And it won't do that the first year, probably not the second year, but after that, once it's like firmly established in your Mm -hmm. yard, you know, it'll say like 10 to 12 plus inches a year or 15 plus inches a year or eight inches a year, you know? You know, what I noticed is that um, based on how much water something is getting as well is a huge indicator. So here's a little like anecdotal evidence. We planted the row of maples. It's kind of nice when you plant like the same thing, like yeah. multiples of them. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened was a couple years ago, one of the sprinklers got stuck and it was just shooting on one of the maples for like a while. And But it was going off at night and I wasn't paying attention. So we had kind of this brown spot in the yard and I was like, why is this brown spot mm-hmm. here? And then finally I figured out that the sprinkler was stuck and it was shooting onto this for maybe like a week or two mm-hmm. where it was just stuck shooting on this one tree well that one tree grew faster than all the other trees and it kind of made me realize like oh wow i didn't realize that the tree wanted that water and Mm -hmm. really liked it and grew like another foot or two beyond the other ones right so it it does make a difference how you're treating it how much sun it's getting how much water it's getting you can say how much something's going to grow but then also like you know our linden trees out in the south garden they're just they're just sitting there yeah like no well, growth minus basically. like three branches that'll grow up like six feet above the canopy of the yeah. tree yeah so i don't know we could share it but i don't even know how useful that information would be mm-hmm. you could say something's kind of like a fast grower or a slow grower like almost all the evergreens are slow growers except for maybe the uh, spring grove arborvitaes mm-hmm. I never cl- like clock how much things are growing either, usually. Yeah. But I like to read that information on the tag. Yeah. I, like the more information that a tag or like a seed packet can have, Johnny's seed packets are the best. They have the best information on the back. No pictures. That's the one thing they're missing. But if they could add pictures, like they would rule. They would yeah. rule them all if they could do that. Um, and real pictures. I like seed packets with like real pictures of what that vegetable or that flower looks like. Um, anyway. I like that on Isley Tax that it says an average growth rate. Sure. Because it's just an average. Like if this tree is getting what it needs, this is what it will grow average. Do proven winners tags have 
growth information? L- not like mature size, but I haven't growth. noticed that. They do include a lot of information on our tags, Most of though. their stuff, though, grows fairly quickly. Like a yeah. lot of perennials yeah. sometimes will be like full size in a year. Yeah. Um, a lot of shrubs take just a couple years to yeah. get to full size. Mm-hmm. So it's probably not as... Yes, like evergreens. Evergreens, it's like, well, it's going to take 20 years to get to full size or more. Susan Marquette said, is there a time when you won't need to water the trees or is that a lifetime deal? It's not lifetime. No, and they'll need less and less. I mean, like our neighbor has mature trees and I've noticed um, he's on irrigation. He just flood irrigates. Mm -hmm. He does that like twice, maybe three times a year Uh where he flood irrigates the trees. Mm -hmm. They look um, great. Yeah, they do look great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm so thankful for that row of trees and they take good such good care of them yeah thankful for that ducks mcgee <laughs> said love all the trees what a blessing to have the property to do some of these big planting projects that truly is question was aaron wearing a mini clip on mic instead of a full mic pack i would love to know what kind that is the dji microphone yeah. i don't know what it's called I, do you prefer that one? Oh, it's so much better yeah couple reasons one there's no cord yeah cords are the worst it's got a clip so mm-hmm. you can clip it to your lapel or it has a magnet so you can just stick the magnet behind if there's nothing to clip to like if you mm-hmm. have a t-shirt on and it comes in like a charging case so you stick it back in the charging case that has a battery and it just starts charging it again mm-hmm. so if you just put it back where it belongs mm-hmm. also it can record on itself so you can press a little button to where you don't need to connect anything to your com- to your camera, it just records onto its own little hard drive. Mm-hmm. The only thing that sucks is that you have to plug in a cord to get that data off there. Mm. It doesn't. It's not a micro SD sure. card. But yeah, I, I love it. I think it's great. The only reason I don't like I I don't like the cord mics. That's what I usually wear. But they're so lightweight on my shirts, and I'm usually wearing something that's like more floppy. Yeah. You know, especially like my other button downs that I've got. <laughs> I have like seven of the same button down um, and that mic just like weighs it down sure. a lot and I don't like love that part of it. Could you put it on the other side since you don't like or down lower where you put your button? I suppose. Is that too far away? Maybe. I don't know. I'd have to play around with that a little bit. Not having a cord go to a <gasps> mic pack. That is the worst. Sometimes that mic, that cord comes out and I don't realize it and I bend down and do something and when I stand up it catches on my knee yeah. and yanks the whole thing like <laughs> yanks me down yeah, that's a pain for sure. And I go through batteries like crazy, especially yeah. on the older mic packs. Like one video, you have to swap the battery out. Hello Connect said, is there room for the branches to grow? I'm not a fan of the branches clashing into each other. Stressful for the tree. First tree setting down, question mark. First tree setting down. Oh, like that one was maybe too close? The Austrian? Oh, maybe. In the end, we do want a pretty tight full border. Because we want to block, you know, we want to only see trees and not really see anything beyond that. So we're going to have some branches coming together like because we border. want it to be a hedge more than like individual trees, which I like the look of that too. Sharon said, using the auger, does Aaron still believe in planting trees high? I noticed British gardening gurus are advising planting trees high. I don't know if they are following Aaron or whether Aaron is following them. <laughs> Who they, are you following Aaron? They are certainly following me, I'm uh, sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I still believe it. I don't, It again, we've talked about this. It's not really planting high. It's knowing that you're going to be coming in with a couple inches of mulch and you got to plan for that couple inches of mulch that's going to come in. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you plant it high. And then when you do your mulch later, it's not really high anymore. And those were high, you guys. I went out and looked <laughs> afterward. <laughs> there was a couple of them, like half the root ball was up above the not ground. half the root it ball. was half the root ball at least i disagree and i think that in the end especially our experience in the south garden with some of those trees that like they were planted low too low yeah. i think you would agree yeah we planted them too low but I we've think mulched like a bunch of times we'll mulch a bunch of times out there too yeah right and i just i would rather hill them up a little bit knowing that we're going to be mulching in multiple years Mm -hmm. and uh, they're not going to be they'll also sink as we water them because Mm -hmm. we we augered down quite a ways oh and so that's probably not what you want to do though like the whole thing about kind of packed it down did you yeah yeah that's the whole thing about like you want to dig your your hole the width like bigger width wise but not bigger depth wise because that loose soil can settle quite a lot yeah so you know planting half the root ball up high you'll probably end up with it down a little bit. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I, it's think, all good I think there's a lot of reasons to definitely give yourself a 
couple inches. Yeah, above. and it's easier. <laughs> it is easier. Yeah. Well, I mean, if especially you've got an if auger, you're hand digging. Yeah. If you've got an auger, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah. Last question is from Diane: Is the Bobcat an actual tractor? My husband noticed the engine is in the back and wasn't sure if it's a tractor or a hybrid or something else. Yeah, it's kind of a hybrid. Um, they're fairly new uh, pieces. I don't like. They're not. They're not common, mm. but it's a it's a wheel loader or an articulating wheel loader, but that's what they're called. Mm. They uh, like big construction equipment. Wheel loaders have been around for a while. Um, you'll see them on like dirt lots, you know, when they're moving like big uh, piles of dirt around. Mm-hmm. But they make these articulating lo- loaders smaller and smaller now, to where you can get like lawn tractor looking articulating wheel loaders that mm-hmm. can still lift like 1500 pounds they're narrow they can go on city sidewalks mm-hmm. and uh, you can you know blow snow or whatever you need to do lots of different uses for i kind of want one but i don't <laughs> think uh i don't think it would make any sense no but it'd be fun i'm sure you'll find a reason why we need one at some point also i just found out about the bobcat toolcat it's like an uh atv utv kind of like a gator but it's a diesel engine that can it has like a skid steer front so you can lift you can put a bucket on it or an auger or a snowblower or anything a skid steer can do um but you can also get them with a three-point hitch on the back yeah. like a like a lo- like a tractor yeah like a small you know compact tractor so you can do like a tiller on the back or anything that a tractor would do mm-hmm. it's really interesting that is but i've seen people put like lawn mowers on the front of them mm. um But you could also put like a flail mower on the back. You could Mm -hmm. put like a mower on the front and the back, which is bizarre. Hmm. So I don't know. Never know when you're going to need to do mowing (laughs) in the front and the back. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Funny. Anyway, you guys, that is it for today's questions. Thank you so much for watching our videos this week. We've got some fun projects coming up. I think I might go buy myself a tiller today. Really? Like a little one that you walk behind. That's more my speed. I think I might do that because I want to plant potatoes and I want a way to get into some of those smaller rows and loosen up the soil a bit. Sure. It probably does make sense to have a tiller that is like 18 inches or yeah, narrow 24 inches. I don't know what sizes they come in, but I'm going to go do some shopping, I think so we can plant potatoes. My potatoes are ready. They're sitting on the counter. So anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. We will see you in the next one. Have a great week. (laughs) Bye.